On a Monday jury morning, <laughs> um, I put a post up yesterday about what I taught yesterday morning, and I thought I would roll it over to today. And we're going to be working into the splits, so <laughs> don't run out the door. <laughs> I know it's not um, it's not my favorite post, but I do want to build up to that particular post because. There's a subject matter that has been brought up over the last several days in many different ways and conversations and readings um, that I've seen. And it's about polarity, it's about division, it's about the split that maybe you have experienced personally or professionally. We've seen it in the world, we've seen it in our politics, but there's a lot of split that's been happening with all the change that's been occurring. And I wanna start off by saying what everybody knows and what you've already heard, that change is inevitable, change is constant. And it is important to embrace and adapt to changes. And some of those changes we don't want, some of the changes we do want, some of the changes are thrust upon us. And if you look back at the last couple of years, I brought this up last week with the full moon, the full moon and where it was sitting and the other planetary alignments were revealing things that have been transpiring since January of 2020. And I was mentioning, you know, think about what happened in January 2020 and all the trials that are happening now in July of 2022. So a lot of the things that were happening at that time are kind of showing up again in other ways. And I was mentioning last week with the full moon, it's always trying to shine a light or shine some light of awareness on what is happening in our lives. So looking at your home, looking at your family, looking at yourself to see, are you still standing in your power? And throughout all the changes, how have you been navigating the changes? And acknowledging the splits that have occurred. There's been a lot of splits with friendships. There's been splits in families. There's been split in politics. There's been all, like split decisions we've been having to make at different times. And so you may even be feeling like you're being pulled in two different directions now and are feeling split. Or maybe you're feeling like you're at a crossroads or facing a fork in the road and you're having to determine the next choice or direction you can make. And I've heard many people say this lately, and you know, I've even thought about it myself, and, and I thought, that's what we're going to work with today. Usually when I work with the splits, I bring up Hanuman. I bring up some sort of story about Hanuman and his adventures and his superpowers and how we can uh, look at the moral code of the stories behind it. But today I just want to make it a little bit more realistic, a little bit more in our domain of what's happening now. And the next thing I'm going to share is just a little story, then we'll get into the practice. Um, I saw this, I think I'm not in use. I don't uh, get wrapped up in the news as much anymore, but when I go to my email, I do at least look at the headlines of what's there. And there was something that caught my attention because it was about a dog. And I was like, oh, I want to hear a happy story. Well, it started off not a very happy story, but it ended up being happy. But it was a man who was feeling split on what he needs to do. And I just wanted to share that. So there was this gentleman who uh, was single and alone. He wanted to adopt a dog. And he went to the local shelter and he found a black lab. And anybody that loves dogs knows that black labs are kind of the cream of the crop. You know, they're just very loyal, very smart, uh, very good as, as far as being a companion. And so he got this black lab, and the black lab, of course, in the shelter looked really sad, right? And most of the animals in the shelters do seem sad. But he thought he was going to change this dog's life, and this dog was going to make him happy. And anyway, he got him home. He got all the things, right? He got the food. He got the bowls. He got the toys. And he's trying to bond with this dog, and this dog is just not having it. <laughs> and they said his name was Reggie. So he's calling this dog Reggie, and Reggie is just, like, pathetic. 
like, and he showed all these photographs of Reggie just being mopey and depressed. And so after a number of weeks, the owner's like, oh, I really thought I would make a difference with this dog and we're not helping each other. Like, this is kind of a sad situation. I think I need to take him back to the shelter. And so he was thinking about taking him back to the shelter. And when he was starting to gather up some of the things, he realized that he had forgotten to open a letter. And when he adopted the animal, there was a letter that came with the adoption. And they told him this is from the original owner that had to let him go. Well, he had never opened the letter. So he opens up the letter to read all the history of this dog and how this owner loved this dog so much and had trained this dog. And he was telling the new owner, these are all the commands the dog knows by voice. And then he knows all of these hand signals. And by the way, his name's not Reggie. His real name is Tank. But I only wanted to give his real name to the next owner. And I wanted you to know my story. The only reason I gave up this dog is because I didn't have any friends or family to take the dog and I'm being deployed to Iraq. So this is obviously an older story. But when the man read, the, read it, he looked up at the dog and he was like, come here, Tank. And as soon as the dog heard its real name, it perked its ears up, his eyes lit up and he came running over and it forever changed the relationship between the new owner and the dog because now he said something familiar. So that guy was split on his decision on what to do. And he was able to receive that sign in that letter and be able to read it and it completely changed the trajectory of his life and owning this dog. So it's a simple kind of happy story but I want you to consider how you can bring this home to yourself. Where are you feeling split? Or how have you been split? And remember, yoga is union. To bind and to bring together. So let's go ahead and start on our backs with the strap close by. And we're going to fan out the feet. And place the hands on the belt. And then go ahead and lengthen through the back of the leg by stretching out through your heels, maybe levitating the feet away from the floor, feeling that contraction in the top of your thighs and knees. And then gently lower the feet back down to the floor. Let the toes roll away from your midline. And if your back is still uncomfortable, feel free to bend the knees and to do a little scooping of the belly and a little tucking of the tailbone. And you can even collapse the knees together. So finding a position that's gonna work for your low back, allowing the hands to rest on the abdomen so that you can start to connect. So right now, just connect to the backside of your body, resting on the mat. Maybe even feeling the texture underneath any exposed skin. Perhaps feeling your clothing. Perhaps feeling some movement underneath your hands as you breathe. And tuning inward. Allowing the breath to bring you back home to yourself and back home to your heart. Because oftentimes we say the true inner compass is in the heart because it's the true intuitive center. So at some point through your practice today, if you can pinpoint a place where you're feeling split, I want you to consider just being in the question of that. And remembering the importance of quieting the mind. 
so that you can tune in to those inner whispers, to the inner calling, to where you may be leaning into a yes with your next choice or direction. Now go ahead and slide your feet together. We'll go ahead and begin some mindful movement. And so for working into the splits today, we're gonna go ahead and warm up the leg. So draw your right knee in towards your upper body, wrap the strap around the sole of the foot, and then sail it up in the air. Fire into your left leg that's resting on the ground, and then push the foot up into the strap. Play the toes nice and wide. Finding your edge of flexibility here with your hamstrings. And remembering to practice with caution when we are working with the hamstrings because that is something we don't want to shred or tear. And since the splits are a more advanced pose, we need to err on the side of caution <coughs> and practice with compassion. Practice with integrity, not trying to push, not trying to force. From Padmasasana A, we're going to move into B. So bring both hips the strap into your right hand, plug down the left tip with your left hand, and then let the leg lean off to the right side <coughs> of the room. Now breathe into the inseam of the leg into the inner quad, into the adductor muscles near the growing area. Notice how the hip feels as it rotates to the side. Let your breath help you to stay grounded in your body in this moment. On your next inhale, bring that leg back up over you. And as you exhale, scoop in through the abdomen, a lift, the head up towards the knee, coming into a supine variation of Padmasasana C. Take one more breath. Exhale, gently lower the head down. Use your left hand to hold the ends of the strap and just send it across your midline. Stay lowered on your low back. Activating the IT band and pushing the knife side of the foot up a little bit higher. And then on your next out breath, roll to the left hip. And as you inhale, extend your right arm to your right side and turn your head over to the right shoulder. Keep that right foot hovering above the floor. And now press through the mouth with the big toe on the right foot. Feel the extra activation there. Maximize your breath. And then affirming internally with yourself, I am opening myself up to a new flow of energy within. Now turn the head so it's neutral, lift the right leg sideward, bend the knee, remove the foot, and slide your right leg out. Draw your left knee in, take Padmasasana A. Starting off with the same sequence, spreading the toes wide, straightening out through the leg as much as you can, finding your edge. Let go of any yearning of wanting or desiring to be anywhere different than you are now. It is earlier in the day and the hamstrings definitely need to warm up. Now it's okay if you get a little slight quivering, but if it starts violently shaking, that's a warning sign. So back off or soften your knee. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand now. Hold the right hand down with your right hand. Lean the leg off to the left side of the room. 
flex through that ankle. I'm trying to keep the pelvis neutral. Stay in command over your breath. Let's sail the leg back up overhead, swap hands to hold the strap. At first, oh, actually come to see. I forgot we added this in, because usually I leave this one out. Scoop in through the belly, lift the head up towards the knee. The right arm can hover. It can also hold the strap. So you can use your own preference there. This is when we do more in Ashtanga. All right, exhale, gently release the head down. Now swap hands to hold the strap and lean the leg across the belly. Pressing the foot into the fabric. Noticing if there's more or less sensitivity with the IT band. And then go ahead and roll into your twist. Remember the foot should hover above the floor. If it drops to the floor, you kind of lose the work. And then turn your head to the left. So that twist is meandering all the way up into the cervical portion. Feel free to close your eyes and affirm internally. I am opening myself up to a new flow of energy within. All right, as you inhale, revolve the head to center, lift the left leg back up overhead, bend the knee, remove the strap. All right, I need you to roll over to your right side and come up and sit for just a moment. I meant to show you this in the beginning and I failed to, so I'm going to give you an option today in case you want to challenge yourself. So what we're going to be doing is a bridge flow up and down. You guys are already familiar with that. <laughs> and I know you're familiar with this variation of supported bridge and waterfall, okay? So you can do this and be more gentle. But once we go to the bridge flow, if you want to try waterfall using your own strength, you'll tuck the shoulders, wrap the hands, and float the legs up. Now they may begin angled. That you actually want the feet here over the hips. That is not easy to do, but I wanted to give you that visual to give you that option if you want to try it. All right, so let's start. Have the block close by in case you want the block. Roll down to your spine, bend the knees. We'll start off with the bridge flow. So arms to the side to initially. And then press with the soles of the feet, circle the arms overhead, lift the thighs, hips, and then chest and towards the chin. And as you exhale, roll it down for the vertebra at a time, allowing the hands and the sacrum to land simultaneously. And then inhale, rising, opening the front body, strengthening the back body. And exhale, control from your core as you lower back down. Do that about three more times just as a warm up, as a great preparation. For whichever waterfall you choose to take. Make sure when you're lifting up to your highest degree that you're still pushing down from the inner arch, inner heel, and now with the big toe. That's it. So your knees stay narrow. That looks really good, Sherry. This time, keep your arms beside you. Inhale, rise to bridge. And then go ahead and determine, do you want to be more gentle? Do you want to utilize that block? Or do you want to roll, tuck the shoulders under, wrap your hands around your waist, and attempt bringing the feet off the floor? Waterfall. So the feet are hanging out over the hips. The arms or the block is supporting you. If the legs start to angle towards the face, just back them up. The idea is to cleanse our circulation, to bring a lot of this blood flow down to the pool of the belly. All right, when you're coming out of waterfall using your arm, sometimes it's easier to bring one foot down first, a little tip of the trade. 
You might be able to bring down both. If you're resting on a block, bring the feet down first, send the block to the side, and then gently roll it down one further at a time. Once everybody rolls down, catch your knees. Take the wind release pose. And stretch out that area of the back that was receiving more of the work. Get a little compression to the belly to aid digestion and elimination. Affirming here, I remove all my scattered forces to rise up and away into the sky. Sometimes it's that scattered, restless energy or nature of the mind that causes that split or divide. Let's go ahead and roll over to one side of the body. And we're going to come all the way up to stand at this point. Now, if you had your block behind you, bring it down in front of you because you might need it. And we're going to really look down at the feet, broaden the base of the feet, and create Tadasana legs. From creating Tadasana form through the legs, we're going to inhale, lift the right knee, and bring the hands to the waist or hips. Flex that ankle. Find a drishti point, a focal point for your eyes. Now, at any point today, if you need to modify here, you can do that. Otherwise, stretch out through the right leg, push out through the right foot. Balance and breathe. And then keep that foot flexed. You're going to skate it past the left foot and just angle and teeter forward where the right foot is hovering. The crown of the head is still upward. And then keep your hips square and see if you can hinge a little bit more. And this is where, if you need to place your hands down to the blocks, if you need to keep the sacrum level, you can. If your hands can go automatically to the floor, feel free to scissor the leg higher and create more of a standing split. Please don't be too forceful because this is still the on start of the practice. Just widen yourself enough, keep rooting the left foot, shining the right foot up and lower the head down. When you're ready, softly bend your left knee, gently lower the right toes to the floor, and you can determine whether or not you want your hands to be on blocks. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the blocks first, and then you can determine if you want them or not. If you're using blocks, don't have them way out here, because that's a strain for the arms. Stack them underneath your shoulders. Now press through the left foot and start to straighten out through the left leg. This is going to be your uh, gauge on whether or not you need blocks and what height of the blocks you may actually need, if at all. Now focus on your back foot, stay on the ball of the back foot, and notice how it feels in the right hip. If your right hip feels a little airy, and maybe that it's rolling open, so dial your right thigh and hip forward towards your left foot that's out in front. You got it. Now feel the difference it made in your front leg. Now exhale, lunge the knee, and look out with your eyes. Again, choosing blocks or not. Inhale, accelerate down to the left foot, straighten out through the left leg, square through the hips. And then exhale, relunge the knee. So we're just rocking back and forth. This is a variation of standing Hanumanasana, the standing split, and then we're moving back into the lunge. All right, we're gonna hold the standing split this time, like we did at the on start. But this time we're gonna bow over the front leg. Feel free to neutralize the neck if the head heavy. On your next exhale, go ahead and relunge the left knee. Look out with your eyes. Now lose the blocks because we're going to step through with the vinyasa. Stepping into plank. Rocking forward, lower down to chaturanga. 
Inhale, bloom up with your heart, up dog. Exhale, roll it back, downward facing dog. Be heavy in your hands. Press into the forward part of the hands and stretch long for your arms and back. Take a full deep breath. And on your next inhalation, we're going to step the right foot forward and up between the hands. Give yourself a helping hand at the feet. And you may want to start with blocks, especially if you use those on the previous side. We're going to accelerate down through the right foot, straighten out through the right leg. And we're just going to take a moment here to drop the head. Make sure you're on the ball of the back foot so the left toes are facing you. If it feels a little airy in the left hip, it may be rolling open. So roll the left thigh and hip forward. The more you press through the ball of the right foot that's out in front, the more you're going to feel the firing up of the peroneal muscles that attach to the shin. And now lunge the knee and gaze out. And we're going to rock back and forth between standing Hanumanasana and the lunge. So if you can, consciously control the breath. Make it slow, steady. Smooth and rhythmic, and then let your movement coordinate with it. So the next time you inhale, straighten out and fold down. Affirm in here as you hold. I choose to dwell with an infinite possibility. Now gently lunge that right knee. So we're going to come out the same way we went in. So the hands are going to move forward of the foot or onto the box to elevate the left leg. Now, if you want to lower your head and your heart and fly the left foot skyward, so you can do this variation of standing split. Now to come out, we walk the hands forward or stack them to blocks. Lower the left leg, lift the head up to attach the hands to the hips. And then we'll slowly come up and we'll stop at that angle. Skate the left foot through, bring the left knee up towards the abdomen. Hold, balance, and breathe. Choose to be here or stretch out with the left leg. Pushing out through the left foot. How do you sauce the deep? And then lower it down. All right. We're going to be prepped for this. <laughs> All right, ground your feet again. Now inhale, we're lifting the left foot up this time. Same thing, you can stay here and how do you sauce the A, or you can transition. We're going to skate the foot through. We lean at a slight angle. Maybe tipping forward. Maybe using locks. Maybe continuing to lower and driving the left leg up. So you have choices. Check in how your body's responding, how your breath is responding. Let the breath override the pose. Good. Now bend the front knee, lower the left foot down. Once you have both feet planted, pick up your hands. You're coming to crescent lunge. So with the right foot in front, the left leg back behind. We're going to exhale, bring the hands to the heart, and we're going to lower the back knee, not all the way down, just enough. And then inhale, we're flying back up. Exhale, coasting down. Meditation in motion. Inhale up. Exhale down. 
One more. Inhale up. Exhale, hands down. Knee down. Lean forward. Sink the knee all the way to the floor. And I need to shift the right foot just a few inches forward. Check in, yes, with your back knee. Knee pads are great for this. Blankets are great for this. It depends on your body. It depends on how thick your mat is. All right, so keep your back toes curled under. Keep sinking down to the pelvic floor. Choices. You can be here. Or you can stack onto your left palm, bring your right hand to your right thigh, and take a twist. That's the second option. The third option is picking up the left foot, pointing the toes. And the final option, if that feels good and appropriate, taking the right hand behind, find the pinky toe side of the foot so that right shoulder and chest rolls open so that you're stretching out the iliopsoas and the back quads. Any of those options will work. Good, exhale. Let's remove the hand from the foot. Bring it back down, pluck up the back knee, step into your plank. Exhale, rock forward, lower down to chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. And breathe here with the eyes open. Look at things in a new way. On your next in breath, we're going to bring that left foot to the front. When you bring that left foot to the front, the hands are going to fly up. We're coming into present. Same sequence, second side. Exhale, hands together. Slowly lower the back knee, just not all the way. And then inhale, drive it right back up. Exhale, apana, grounding energy. Inhale, prana, rising energy. Continue. All right, this time we're going to bring it down. So when you get all those to the floor, you can lean ahead, use your hands to help. If that knee crosses way past that front ankle, you can sweep the foot forward. It's okay if it's a little past and yet it's acceptable. Be mindful of your personal knee. Check in to see if you need padding. Keep dropping down towards gravity. First option right here. This will work. Second option, right hand rounded, left hand stacking as you twist to the left. Next option, pick up the right foot on the toes. Last option, left hand goes back, catches the foot. Perhaps drawing it closer. The breath nice and full. All right, let's release that back foot. Let's descend that left hand. Curl the back toes to keep that right knee lifting. And now from here, the hands are going to come forward. You can use blocks, remember. You can stop halfway, or you can do the standing forward split. Now walk the hands forward or stack to blocks. Eventually bring the hands to hips, lifting the torso. Eventually coming through to stand, right knee drawing in towards the belly, navel drawing in and up towards the heart. 
tailbone face down and maybe cutting your abdomen deep. And this. All right. Keep rolling. How are we doing? All right. <laughs> Right knee floats up. Padmasasana A or D. Yogi's choice. And then hinging forward. Maybe angling more so you're parallel to the floor. Keep your hands at your hips or waist. And then eventually take the hands down to blocks or floor and plying the right leg sideways. So there's symmetry as we're coming down, and then we can create the asymmetry in order to create that true split. But again, pay attention to your body. You know your body better than anyone. All right, bend that front knee. Slowly lower the right foot down. You may or may not need the blocks as you set the knee to the floor and untuck the back toes. Check in to see if you need that extra pad. From here, we're going to drive the hips down, and then we're going to rock onto the heel of the front foot. And this is also a half slip, half panamanasana. And then we're just going to walk it forward and back between these two poses. And the next time you take half Kanamanasana, you have choices here. You may have to stay upward. You might be able to lower downward. You can even sit back on a block and stretch out over that front leg. So again, there's choices. <clears throat> and you may not need the block to sit on, but I wanted you to know that you could. Burning here, left and right, and all around life's harmonies of mind. I choose to dwell in infinite possibilities. All right, we're going to inch it back onto the sole of the left foot. Hands down, back toes curl, step into plank. Shift forward, lower down to Chaturanga Dhamma. Inhale, rise to upward facing dog. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Now, for the last few years, I've been instructing down dog in a way where we're not actually dropping the heels. We're actually sending all the energy up to the sits bones. But I want you to do it the old way today, or at least right now. So on your in breath, I want you to stream your energy up from your hands into your seat. And as you exhale, spill the energy from your seat down through the heels of the feet. All right, focus in the upper body. Inhale, push into the hands. Stretch out through your arms and spine. And then exhale, run it down to the back side of your legs. Beautiful. Do that one more time. It's kind of old school down dog here. Beautiful. Now inhale, the right foot's going to launch forward in between the hands. You can go ahead and set the back knee down and untuck the back toes and line up any padding that's needed. And we're going to go from the half lunge to the half split. We're getting there, you guys. If you don't have Epsom salt at home, but you may want to pick some up on the way home. If you haven't worked this pose in a while. And so think about it, we need both of these poses to prep for the half split, or for the full split. We need the stretch in the back quads for the iliopsoas. We also need the front hamstrings. All right, now, if you want to hold your half split or even sit back, 
on the ground or a block and fold over. You can match it up the way you worked the previous side. Left and right, and all around life's harmonies. I choose to dwell in infinite possibilities. Inch your arm up forward, that walk, come back ahead, curl the back toes, lift up that knee. When you're ready, you know what to do. Standing on the right leg, shining the left foot up, walking the hands forward, maybe to blocks, or bringing them back to the waist. Eventually coming up to stand. Reforming Padmasana A or D. All right, we have one more flow. Okay, and this one's actually going to take us into it. All right, hands to the hips, stacking and standing on the right leg, lifting the left knee. Choices: Padmasana A or D. Can hang out at this angle or more parallel. Eventually dipping the head and hands down, stand the slip, bend the right knee, lower the left foot back. And I'm not using blocks anymore, but you certainly can. Hands are going to frame the front foot or straightening the front leg, standing for the split here with both feet on the floor and then relunge the knee. Inhale, float the hands up. We're bringing it all together. Exhale, hands to heart. Slowly descend the back knee. Untuck the back toes. Hands to the floor. Rock it back to half split. Again, it's okay to use blocks. Coming forward to the sole of the foot, grounding the left hand, picking up the right. Maybe picking up the back foot, maybe catching it one last time. Good, release that back foot. Bring the right hand down. Now we're ready for it. Okay, so to prepare for this, <laughs> have everything kind, kind of available. And then we'll go slow with it. So if you press back into your hips and pick up your right toes, you slide your right foot out. And then at some point you may get kind of stuck, right? So then you start to slide in your left foot back. Now this is as far as I can go right now on this side. So I don't want to stay here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bolster underneath that right thigh. And this still feels like it's not enough support for me this early in the day. So I'm going to come back and put blocks down, bolster on top, because I don't want to feel like I'm shredding or tearing any muscles. And I don't want you to feel that way either. When you have enough support, and you don't feel like you have to continue to drop your hands and use your upper body. If you're still using your upper body, I don't want you to do anything else. But if it's okay for you to steal your weight down and you don't need your arms, see if you can take your arms up overhead. If you need your arms, use them. Some people like to fold over the front leg. You can also do that. Ready to come out? Okay, to come out, you are going to push down through your hands and you're going to pull up through your heart, navel, and pelvic floor. And that will slide your right foot back. And then you can 
Conquered one side of the split. <laughs> and I have a feeling you're actually going to be better in the next one. Only because we were leading with the right leg, and that's the masculine side. And next, we'll be leading with the left side, which is the feminine. So you might surprise yourself. Inhale, let's stretch the arms out in front and look the face up. Rock up to hands and knees, curl the toes. We're going to take that last vinyasa. And once you return to downward facing dog, we get this left side. Let's go ahead and set the left foot all the way forward and up between them. And then this is where you can determine do I want blocks or not? Because we're straightening out the front leg, rolling the right hip around. Good, then we'll lunge the left knee. We'll float the hands up, crescent lunge. Then we're working this back leg here. Hands to the heart, slowly. Lower the back knee, hands down, untuck the back foot, walk the hands back, take half split, walk it forward to half lunge. Ground the right hand, pick up the left hand, take the twist. This may be enough, or you might be able to take another phase, perhaps even catching the back. Good. Now release the back foot, swing that left hand around, <coughs> and now we're going to inch through hips back. And this is where we want to make sure the props are available. And again, you might surprise yourself, you may not need as many. We'll go ahead and stretch out through the front leg. Just test the waters here with a bolster or blocks under the bolster. And these bolsters have been around for a while, so they're a little pushier. Um, if you have a bolster at home that's newer, it may be more uh, thick, more dense, and it may offer more support. So only if you don't need your hand, if you feel like, oh, okay, I can breathe, I can rest, and then lift your arms. If not, keep your arms down. Every time I lift my arms in this pose, I think of that Saturday Night Live on them. Super <laughs> talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to push down through the hands, draw up to the pelvic floor. When we root, we rock. So when you're grounding, something else is lifting. Let the pelvic floor lift, the navel lift. Slide the bolster away. Curl the back toes under because we have to finish out the sun style. <laughs> So when you're ready, hands walk forward, lift in the right leg. Walking the hands forward to lift the head and heart, stacking hands to the hips, and slowly finishing the salutation with Padagusasa A or D. Good. All right, I went much slower than I did yesterday. Yesterday we went a lot faster. How was it? Good. That's good. Do you feel like you got one more in you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing questionable faces, like I'm not sure. Um, okay. If you've got one more in you, let's go to a walk. We're taking. 
the mat with us. And if you don't mind being in the video, you're here, if you don't want to be in the video, move elsewhere. <laughs> So sometimes when we work on splits, I think it's right into handstands. We're not doing handstands today, so don't worry about that. I thought what we would do today, since we've worked so much with the splits, we could do one more variation. Um, go ahead and come to sit on the floor a minute, either in tabletop or in a comfortable seat. So with uh, your home practice, highly encourage a home practice. Especially if you're you know, traveling and you get a practice in, you can do it in your hotel room. You can do it outside. The beach gets a little messy, but it works. Uh, if you get stuck in your practice and you're like, I can't remember the poses, but maybe you have a couple favorite poses. Look at your couple favorite poses and just turn them in different directions and you can come up with like five different poses. So you can see already the different way you can do these splits today. And there's a way to do that at the wall with downward facing dog, where we use the wall to walk back to create more of a split here. So it looks like this. Uh, by the way, is the splitting aggravating anybody's SI joints or low back for any reason? I have one that has given me grief uh, since 2020, but it's totally fine right now. So I'm not worried about it. Go in to check in with your bodies. Okay, you're good, we're good. Um, your feet are not gonna touch the baseboard, but they're gonna be pretty close. You're gonna land in uh, tabletop in order to take down dog. So if you were having, a little too close to the wall. So if you were having some SI joint stuff happening, you might wanna stay here. You see how the hips are more even, the sacrum is more level, so you can just, be here. To go towards the split, you'll untuck the toes, you'll walk your hands back, <laughs> and then the leg goes up the wall, you know. And then the left foot usually plants. Um, I did see one person not plant their foot yesterday, um, and I didn't get to work with her individually, so I'm not sure why that happened, but uh, don't force it. If it wants to stay lifted, keep it lifted, no big deal. You're still grounded through your hands, but let's try it. Tabletop first, feet away from the baseboard, and then curl the toes. Go ahead and take downward facing dog. And once you take down dog, if your heels touch the baseboard, maybe crawl forward just a baby step. Okay, start with the right leg. So lift your right foot to the wall. The toes are turned down, the toes are tucked initially. Square your hips because I want you to get that proper action. Because there's times where you're flowing and teachers will say, keep the hips square. And there's other times where teachers will say, scissor the legs. And I want you to be able to feel the difference. So Mary Catherine, if you roll that right foot down more towards the floor, a little bit more towards the floor, a little bit more towards the floor, and then pull in your core. There you go, that's it. Beautiful. Now untuck the foot. Now let that hip kind of swivel open. Maybe walk your hands back, maybe slide the right foot up and just test the waters here. Again, don't force, don't break, don't tear. We're not trying to break, it's not a wishbone, right? It's just yoga. We're still trying to keep everything bound together. Hold it one last breath. And when you're ready, walk your hands forward and then that foot can slide down or step down. And go ahead and come back to your knees. Any questions? How was it? Second side? All right, second side, curl the toes. Take downward facing dog, stepping the left foot high up over the hip. And then if you feel a little bit of that air in the left hip, roll it downward. Press into the hands, such in the belly and support your low back. And then when you're ready to slide, untuck the toes, travel the hands back towards the wall. And 
And again, don't force, don't fight. Breathe. Good, when you're ready, walk the hands out, let the foot slide or step down. Come on down yourself. All right, so we did a lot <laughs> of foundational stuff with the legs, but we also operated from the hips. In the hips, one of the spiritual lessons is how well are we adapting to navigating change? So we're going to end it like the wall because you earned it. <laughs> so you're going to be on the corner of your mat and you're going to roll to it and send your legs up the wall. The hands can be anywhere. Whatever feels freeing. I was talking to someone this weekend, actually, who has always shared with me there was a pretty rocky relationship at home. And she's always taking a lot of pride with her work. She's excelled at her work. And she was sharing with me this weekend. She was like, no, everything is changing. She says, I don't do no change. She said, now everything is coming together at home and everything's falling apart at work. And I think I might get fired. And so we were just talking about the same subject matter. That's part of our theme today. How much change that's occurred wanted or unwanted, expected or unexpected. And I was reminding her of the yoga philosophy. And she left the big smile on her face. So I hope that you hear this message today if you've been feeling like things are falling apart, remember things can actually be pulled together. You just can't see it yet. If you've been feeling split, use this time wisely, drop inside. Remind yourself when you depart, you need to develop some quiet time and solitude with yourself so that you can hear that you're falling in your heart.
three deep breaths. The end of the third, you can fold the knees back in or slide the feet down the wall. Roll over to your favorite side. And feel free when you come up to sit with back support against the wall. Bringing your hands to on the wing to a prayer position at the bottom. We are aligned, we are balanced. And we are connected to our heart. That is when we feel that state of oneness and that state of yoga. Hopefully you're experiencing that now. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Next thing I want to say to you is we all have like doubts that come up in our mind when we're feeling like we need to make a split decision and we're feeling pulled in two different directions. We can write it down on paper, all the pros and the cons, the positives and the negatives, and we still might be confused. But there's usually a moment, and it can be when we're driving in the car, it can be. Um, at odd moments where we're not even thinking about it, where we get that download, we get that clarity, and we know without a shadow of a doubt, it's a yes or a no. And if you want to trust your intuition, if you're trying to hone in on your intuition, if you're trying to expand your intuition, you have to remember that moment in time and go, Okay, I'm questioning it again. I'm doubting again. I'm getting all this advice again. But that moment, I had clarity and I had the yes or no. The, the older I get and the more I put that into practice, it leads me the right way. So I'm just sharing that because I know somebody needs to hear it today. Trust that moment of clarity and don't question it. And when you do question it, go, ah, there's my doubting Thomas again, or there's my condition again, or there's where I'm not trusting myself again, <clears throat> and go right back to that moment. So important. All right, have a beautiful rest of your day. <clears throat>